Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashlyn. I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I take that science and I apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, this is part two of the mycorrhizal fungi soil additive. If you didn't watch the first one, I suggest you do so. It is all about the science and exactly how to preserve it naturally in your soil, all the way to what it does for your plant and your soil microbiome. In today's video, we're talking about the commercial side of this product. So whether you buy soil that is infused with this or you buy the powder form or the liquid form that you can then apply to your potting soil or to your garden. I'm very passionate about this because I worked in this industry and I did field research on the commercial side and I specifically worked on commercial crops, so large scale farming. I've seen what this stuff can do to your yields and your upper biomass and even your root mass over an entire growing season. So I can see the benefits to it. And I actually think it's a really great additive. With that being said, there are some things you need to watch out for because marketing <laughs> doesn't always tell the truth. So I'm gonna give you guys the actual tools to determine what product you wanna purchase and why you may want to purchase it. I don't dislike any of these companies and I don't dislike any of these products, so I will put them down below with an Amazon link. I do see the benefits to them, but I do want you to ensure that the symbiosis is possible based on the plant you have and the actual fungi you're purchasing. So I picked two specific commercial products. I picked the ProMix HP Mycorrhizal Infused Potting Soil, and then I actually chose an additive, which is the Myke, the M-Y-K-E additive. And they have three different products. They have the uh, herbs, vegetables and herbs, they have shrubs and trees, and then they have a flower formula. So we'll look at all three of those and then also the pro mix soil. So when I started looking at the pro mix, I started dissecting the active ingredients, which is where you actually want to look if you're trying to figure out what strain is in that soil profile. And there's one part of the active ingredients that stood out to me the most, and it was PTB297. This immediately triggered me because this is exactly the same way that we actually used to label our strains when we were doing our field testing. And I knew that this was the technology or the patent behind the fungi that they were using. So a quick Google search actually brought up exactly what this technology meant and what strain was involved in this technology. Well, it is owned by Premier Tech, which is a somehow related to AGTIV, which seems like that is more of the science portion or the division of science for Premier Tech, which is obviously some sort of conglomerate mixed in with ProMix. And rather than PTB297 being a wide range of fungi, which I was slightly disappointed with, it's actually just one strain. The strain that they use for this is actually called Glomus intradices. So I can then look at Glomus intradices, the species of microfite rhizal fungi to determine what plants or what species of plants this type of fungi makes a relationship with. So when you Google Glomus intradices and you try to look up papers on it, you will quickly notice that the name has been changed based on some taxonomy and exactly how they look at it. So it can be called Glomus intradices or the mycorrhizal fungi can be called Rhizophagus aurealis. So the, it's, it's essentially the same thing. It's just been renamed as something else. This specific strain is known, and this is slightly biased because this is AGTAV's claims, but it's known to colonize most if not all species of plants. I take this with a grain of salt especially since it's not an acto mycorrhizal fungi which we talked about in the last video it's an endo mycorrhizal fungi meaning it really has to have a connection to that plant in order to form a, a, a relationship or any to get any sort of results from from the product. So if it is able to actually achieve some sort of symbiosis, what will end up happening is you will end up with better water usage, more nutrient uptake, and then actually a soil stability. So it actually is going to stabilize the soil and aggregate it into one kind of block. 
The problem with this is only if that strain can make a relationship with your plant. So what I specifically ask or caution you to do, especially since Promix doesn't list this on the back of the package, from what I saw, this may have changed now, but it does not tell you what it won't form a relationship with. If it is able to form a relationship with, say, your tomatoes, it's going to work. However, if it can't, you're not going to see any results. Now, if you choose to use this ProMix soil and spend the money on it, even if it doesn't make the connection between the plant and the fungi, the soil, the potting soil itself, is going to work just like a regular potting soil. There's no bent downside to using this stuff. It's just you won't maybe get the, I'm not sure if it's more money or not, but you just won't see the benefits. So look at the active ingredients on your soil, your infused soil, figure out what species is in there, and then just do a quick Google search with that mycorrhizal species name to see if it matches your plant. So say it's this Glomus, type in Glomus with tomatoes and it will tell you or studies will pop up that show a connection or lack thereof. So with the Mike product, this is a product you would actually add to your soil, whether that be your outdoor garden soil or your potting soil, you would actually add this in or introduce it into your potting soil. It actually is also made by Premier Tech. Same company and same strain in all three products, <laughs> meaning if you buy the flower formula, you can use the flower formula for your vegetables and for your trees and shrubs. If you buy the tree and shrub one, you can use it for your vegetables and your flowers. It's the same strain. There's no difference. Now, again, this may have changed, but from what I can see without spending all the money to buy all these different packaging to see what exactly is on it, all I could find on the internet, all I could find on their website, all I could see from the very rough photos that people had taken and actually placed on Reddit. It is all the Glomus interdices. It's the exact same stuff that's in the Pro Mix. So they probably have a claim to this specific, one specific train, strain of fungi, and they're just replicating it and reusing it over and over again. The difference between the Mike product and the ProMix product is that on the Mike product, it actually tells you what plant types it will not work with. So one of the, the big ones that I saw in there was actually brassicae species. So it won't work with things like broccoli, cabbage, canola, that sort of stuff. So it does list those as ones that it's not compatible with. There's also a compatibility list on their website, which I'll leave a link for down below. But needless to say, regardless of which bucket you have, you can use the same stuff on all your plants. Unfortunately, if you've purchased all three, you literally just have this same strain multiplied by three times. It's all about marketing, folks. So this is probably the highlight of the entire thing of the entire video, regardless of what product you choose to gather, get, whether it's the infused soil or the, the packaging where it's supposed, where it's this, just the spores that you then add to your soil, there are some very important things to remember before you spend your hard earned cash on mycorrhizal fungi soil additives. The biggest thing being these products are incredibly sensitive to heat, meaning if it is in a pallet or on a pallet in the sun outdoors outside your, your garden place, all your fungi in there is dead. It is completely dead. I can almost guarantee you that because to put this into perspective, when I was actually working on field trials, our fungi was in a freezer. Every morning before we went to the field, we would get our fungi out of the freezer, immediately put it into a cooler. This cooler was then put into a truck and plugged into the side or into the, the console to keep it cool. It was a plug-in freezer. And then to actually mix these seeds or to mix the soil, we actually were inoculating the seeds with this stuff. So in order to inoculate, we were in a covered topper of the truck 
with the AC blasting, all the windows covered up and we had to move quick. We wanted that stuff to stay cold the entire time. If it heat, heated up at all, say we something busted on our, our cooler or say we were in the field for too long and we accidentally forgot it in the sunlight or we forgot to plant a, a set of seeds that had been inoculated right away. What we, we did was we threw it out because we knew it was dead. That is how sensitive this stuff is. So besides the fact that you can see where your garden center is storing this stuff, obviously the inoculant or the spores are going to be in an indoor setting, but the potting soil in particular being in the great outdoors is, is an issue. There's also the transport trucks. If the transport truck or the transport trailer was left in sun and those transport trucks and trailers can get very, very hot, um, your, your fungi and your spores are dead again. So that is the downside. The other downside is you can't actually tell whether or not your spores are alive or if they're dead. So if they were mishandled in any sense of the world word, uh, you, you're going to end up with nothing. So it, it's up to you, but that is my warning to you. If it has been exposed to any heat or you're unsure of how it was handled, I would probably steer away from it. I personally would love to use this stuff in my garden. I would be inoculating my soil, potting soil, outdoor soil, like crazy. But there's two factors that keep me from it. The first one being, I don't know how it was stored and I'm not gonna spend a ton of money on mycorrhizal fungi if I'm not entirely sure whether or not it's, it's okay or if it's alive. The second issue I have is the fact that they are all using the same strain. If there was a large range of strains in the mixture or if there was very specific strains for each type of crop, um, I'd be more interested in the product, but the fact that it's just whatever strain they could patent is what's in the product gives me some hesitation. Uh, this stuff is expensive. To me, it seems expensive, but it's up to you guys. I'd be interested to know if you've used mycorrhizal fungi in your gardening setup and whether or not you actually saw that relationship begin to establish. I'd be interested to know how many of you have noticed it's alive versus how much of it is dead. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you watch that first video and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!